In these liberated times, we are shocked by the notion of submission, the idea that one partner in a marriage is somehow subservient to the other. Shocked by the idea that wives should submit to their husbands, but what the writer of Ephesians says about the way husbands should submit is more shocking still. Listen to this. Husbands should love their wives, he says, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. According to the author of Ephesians, the supreme model of gracious submission is not a woman, but a man. You remember that scene from Matthew's Gospel where Jesus comes to be baptized by John in the Jordan River? And John objects. I should be baptized by you. He says, do you come to me? He knew that what he offered was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But he also knew that Jesus was no sinner, didn't need to repent. Why was he coming for baptism? And Jesus' answer in Matthew's Gospel is, let it be so now in in order to fulfill all righteousness. And I'm not sure that John knew what he meant by that. I'm fairly sure that I don't know what he meant by that. Maybe you don't know either. But the word righteousness by itself is a dangling modifier. It only makes sense if it is the righteousness of something, as in the righteousness of God. And that may only make sense to us if we think of it as doing or being what God considers right. Now that's a stretch, but if it's a fair stretch, it would mean that when Jesus said he needed to be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness, he was saying that he needed to do what God wanted him to do, which is probably why God chose him instead of one of us. If it had been me, I might have wanted everyone else to submit to me. I might have wanted them to line up on both sides of the road and bow down as I went to the river for baptism. And when John said, you should baptize me instead of me, you, I would have said, okay. It's what I would have wanted. But it was not apparently what God wanted. And Jesus yielded to God's authority. So his baptism can be understood as an act of submission to the will of the Father. And those of you who know the story know that it would not be the last time he did such a thing. In the Garden of Gethsemane, approaching the hour of his own death, which he also referred to as a baptism, he said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. At the end of his ministry, as at the beginning, he lays down the terrible burden of having to get his own way in order to take up the terrible freedom of doing it the Father's way. It is really no less than he expects from us. When I used to talk to those fifth and sixth graders about baptism, I told them that if they ever decided to be baptized, there would come a moment in that ceremony when I asked them to profess their faith. And when I did, they should say, Jesus is Lord. That may not sound like much to you, I would say, but it is an act of submission. It is a way of saying to the world that from now on, You will be surrendering your will to His. You will be laying down the burden of doing things exactly as you please and taking up the freedom of doing things exactly as He pleases. That seems like a lot to ask a fifth or sixth grader. But the author of Ephesians would not think it was too much. This meddlesome preacher elbows his way into our most private, our most personal business on the assumption that we are not our own, that we were bought with a price, and that when Jesus, who laid down his life for his bride, the church, asks us to do something, the very least we can say, the very least, is yes, dear. Yes. Shall we pray?
Lord Jesus, it's true. We don't really want to submit to you or anyone else. There is not a submissive bone in our bodies. And yet you have called us to be yours and to let you be Lord. And that means submitting our will to your will, to letting you have your way with us, to provide leadership for our lives, to stand over us, not only as Savior, but as Lord. We pray that we might learn the discipline of submission and in it discover the freedom of not always having to get our own way, the freedom of letting you have your way in our lives. May it be so, Lord Jesus, and may we begin to see what happens when you have your way with us, how everything begins to get better how we begin to see more clearly than ever before who we are and what is required for abundant, overflowing, everlasting life. Lord Jesus, be Lord over us on this day. We humbly submit in your name. Amen.